What do you recall is one place that people connect with President Richard Nixon? In fact, there are several places in Whittier and many places in Southern California. Paul Carter put these places together on one map and is another hidden gem. Hi there, my name is Paul Carter and I created Native Son, Richard Nixon, Southern California, a map biography of the 37th president. We're standing here on Whittier College where Richard Nixon attended from 1930 to 1934. This map is a unique map biography. What I did was I took a person's life and brought it from beginning uh, birth through his death and all the places that he was at from the perspective of his being the first Southern Californian to grow up and become President of the United States. And I was with the mayor of Whittier and uh, I've always read books about Nixon and continue to, to, to learn about him. And so while making small talk with the mayor, I said something to the effect of, it must be really neat being in Whittier and having all the locations where Nixon was born and raised and, and, and grew up, um, you know, identified. And um, he looked at me and kind of scratched his head and said, you know, we kind of lost track of all the places where Nixon was at. And I thought about it and I said, I'm going to make a map. This took about two years of research and then seven months of working with an artist. One of the issues uh, between the time that Nixon lived here and the time that I decided to do the map Whittier went through and renumbered all of its streets. Once I found the locations, then I had to go through and cross-reference them all and, and search the deeds at the county recorder's office and, and track them down manually because they're so old. In fact, many people have told me that uh, Nixon nostalgia has become very popular now. And I, I think that there's more interest in him developing now than there has been for, for a great amount of years uh, since his resignation. We're here in front of the studio state which the Nixon family bought in the summer of 1939. But that uh, observatory room which, uh, was where Richard Nixon kept all of his books and would use as his study while the family lived here. And this was the home where Pat and Richard Nixon had their wedding reception after they were married in June of 1940 at the Mission Inn in Riverside. We're now at the bungalow on Beverly Boulevard that the, the Nixons lived. This is their second house that they moved into after they were married. We're standing in the living room of the first apartment that Pat and Richard Nixon had together. They moved in here and lived here for about six months through December of 1940. This is on Incanada and La Habra Heights. Now we're on Honeysuckle Lane in front of the home that the Nixons had when, they, when Richard Nixon was a United States Senator. This is across the street from Candlewood Country Club, which at the time was the Houston Meadows restaurant. There's some campaign photographs that were taken of uh, Pat and Richard and Julie and Tricia Nixon coming out of the house and walking along the dirt road amongst these pine trees that are along this road. And there's uh, ducks actually from the local area that are walking along with them. We're now in front of the Nixon residence where they moved in 1946 after he returned home from World War II and ran for Congress for the first time in an election against Jerry Borges. What makes these locations notable? They're notable because they show how a person can grow up from humble beginnings and become President of the United States of America and be no different than any of the rest of us. That's what makes them notable. Okay, I'm Would looking you, around the area for hidden gems. Is your map one of those? My map is a, a compilation of all of the hidden gems of Nixon's life in Southern California, and especially here in Whittier. This house right here behind us is where he lived in 1946 when he ran for Congress. 
It's just down the street from where he lived when he was growing up at the Nixon store, and it's across the street from the East Whittier Friends Church, where he was a member all of his life.